No one was ready for the chaos that would occur in Exile Island, and the man who won it all was the perfect reflection of that. G'day guys, welcome back to Snuff, where we discuss everything about the greatest game on television, Survivor. Today we'll be revisiting Survivor Panama, as we take a look at Otis Bull's carcass's journey to the title of Soul Survivor. Survivor Panama was the first time we had four tribes and we were first introduced to Otis Buscarcus, a 24-year-old yoga instructor from Santa Monica, California, as a member of the Viveros tribe before he was swapped to Kasaya alongside 35-year-old nurse Sari Fields, a medical sales representative Danielle DiLorenzo, and Shane Powers, a 35-year-old marketing executive from Los Angeles. Otis and the Viveros tribe struggled at the start of the game, failing to set up camp and make fire instead choosing to goof around and only narrowly beating the older women of Kasaya to avoid tribal council. On day four, he swapped to the new Kasaya tribe and immediately formed an alliance with Shane, Danielle and Courtney Marrett, but it looked as though the alliance may have been on shaky ground as Shane threatened to quit the game as he went through withdrawals. Otis managed to convince him to stay and they banded together alongside Bob Dog to vote out Melinda. Kasaya then went on to win two consecutive immunity challenges and Otis began gunning for the elimination of Bruce, but the women felt that Bobby was a bigger threat sending him home in a 3-2-1-1 vote. Kasaya entered the merge on day 16 with a 6-4 numbers advantage and dominated the Gidonos tribe, voting out Nick, Austin and Sally in consecutive tribal councils, although they faced one major obstacle, with Terry Dietz winning in three consecutive individual immunity challenges. Otis and the Kasaya tribe were weakened after Bruce was medically evacuated due to constipation on day 25, and Terry continued his individual immunity streak, forcing the Kasaya 5 to turn on their own. Otis was on the chopping block with Courtney and Terry throwing his name out as a potential target, while Otis and Shane wanted to vote for Danielle, with Sari the crucial swing vote between both plans. Sari pulled in Otis and Danielle, and together they voted out Courtney in the 3-2-1 split vote. Sari was quick to fill me in on the situation. She really has my back, which is nice. And she let me know about the goings-on, and basically what's going on now is we're going to vote for Courtney. At this point, it was clear that Otis was becoming frustrated with Terry's dominance after he went on to win his fifth straight individual immunity challenge, and Otis once again went along with Sari and Danielle, this time to vote out Shane, who had aligned with Terry and was deemed to be a threat to the original Kasaya members. At the final four, Terry and Otis's long-standing feud finally came to a head as Otis won the reward challenge and in the meantime, told Terry to call the ambulance. Somebody call a ambulance! Terry's crying on the course! Go ahead and take over your role. He was presented with the option to bring one other tribe mate with him to the Panama Canal and he chose Sari, leaving Terry and Danielle at Exile Island where they formed an alliance against Otis and Sari, setting up a 2-2 stalemate. Terry's time on Exile Island didn't help in the immunity challenge with Otis winning his first individual immunity, but it was well known at this point that Terry was in possession of the hidden immunity idol, keeping him safe at tribal council and leaving Danielle and Sari to fight it out in a fire making challenge after forcing a 2-2 tie. Danielle won the challenge and Otis's closest ally Sari was eliminated, leaving him in the final three alongside Danielle and Terry. Terry won reward in the lead up to the final immunity challenge, but it didn't help him out as Danielle pulled out individual immunity, guaranteeing her a spot in the final two, and she chose to honour her original Kasaya alliance as Terry would have the support of the former Lamina members, voting out Terry and setting up a final two battle between Otis and Danielle. The pair enjoyed their day 39 breakfast with a glass of champagne and in a shock incident, Otis slipped on a wet rock and fell slicing his hand open and requiring 7 stitches by the medical crew that very well could have sent him out of the game and resulted in his medical evacuation. I got my butt kicked out here by the elements, I got my butt kicked by Terry Dietz a lot of the time. I got my butt kicked by my own short-sightedness falling down on the rocks. Despite the fact that I made it 39 days, I feel like my ego has been crushed. Despite the injury though, Otis soldiered onto the final tribal council and pleaded his case as being a loyal member of the Kasaya Alliance and a strong social player. Otis remained true to his alliance and never wavered, working hard to reach the end winning a 5-2 vote over Daniel DiLorenzo to be crowned the sole survivor. The winner of Survivor Exile Island. Otis reached the end through his strong leadership skills and by building relationships with his original Kasaya members, staying true to the bonds he built. Despite not being able to prove his physical prowess in challenges, he used more than his strength to win the game. What did you think of Otis Buscarcus' journey to the title of Soul Survivor? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoy what you've seen, I really appreciate it if you give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for all the fixings. New videos just like this one every Tuesday and Thursday, 7.30pm Eastern Time. That's Wednesday and Friday, Australian Time. 
Stay tuned next time as we delve into the story of Yul Kwan, winner of Survivor Cook Islands. Physical, social, and strategic. The hallmarks of a great winner. Grab your torch, tap back to camp. Good night. Falling down and hurting myself today reminded me just how human I am and reminded me just how much of a game this is. What that is is saying, look, Aris, you don't have to be a Superman. You don't have to be a superhero and you'll be okay. And so with that perspective coming into tribal council, maybe I'll be able to connect with people at a deeper level. That's the hope. <laughs>